What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of Ask Assist P. So my name is Ryan Williams. Uh, I like to answer people's questions. Uh, this podcast is slightly evolving, right? So it used to be me talking to an echo chamber. But for the second week in a row, I have a, a special guest. So I have uh, Mr. James Carroll III on the show. Uh, if you could just give us a, a quick little uh, intro, who you are and what, what you really do. All right. Thanks, Ryan, for having me. Uh, my name is James, uh, as Ryan stated, I'm James Carroll III. Um, I am currently on an extended vacation right now, um, but I, I do come from a background of working in um, the oil and gas industry. I um, also have a background in working in security, um, public and private sector. And uh, right now, the uh, the pursuit is to break into cybersecurity. So uh, uh, hopefully, I can share some information and give a little insight into myself to kind of help everyone get to know who I am. And again, Ryan, thank you for, you know, providing a platform to just kind of talk and, and, and discuss and ask questions and, and, uh, and just exchange feedback. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I'm glad to have you on the show. Uh, like I said, th- this is currently evolving, right? So this is a companion show to the other side of the firewall where we, you know, talk about the uh, ladies and greats of cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who've made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall or that, that glass ceiling, right? Uh, this show, on the other hand, uh, we, or I should say, I wanted to um, answer people's questions. I know a lot of people are trying to break into cyber. Uh, it's an ever-growing field. There's more than a million vacancies. So they uh, they say for uh, the need for more cybersecurity professionals. And, uh, you know, I, I want to hear where people are at on their journey and then, uh, you know, answer questions on, uh, or what they might want to pursue or at least help them to find connections and network, right? Uh, because it's, it, again, it's very broad and uh, we need as many people as we can get. So uh, I actually... Uh, received a recommendation to have you on the show from uh, Tish. So <laughs> this was on last week. Uh, yeah. Very, very uh, <clears throat> high energy, very passionate about cybersecurity. Uh, she's now trying to break in as well. And uh, as soon as I posted a video, she was like, you should talk to uh, James. And she tagged you. And I was like, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me look at his profile real quick. And then when I looked at it, I saw geoscience. And so I saw you're, you're taking uh uh, what seemed to be a pretty big pivot from from a sector I have no clue how it works in the cybersecurity. So I was like, I, I think I asked you the question, like how how do the two tie to one another? Yeah. And now here here we are. So uh, if you could just give me and the audience, uh, you know, both video and audio, uh, kind of a uh, uh, your journey, right? How did you go from one to the other? Okay. So wow. It, it... <clears throat> You know, and, and, and just looking back, just in my mind right now, just like I'm just, I'm still kind of in a place of like, wow. But um, so I graduated. I, I'll, I'll start back at the, the point of college. I, I, I graduated from Preview a and with a degree in information systems. And just to be a little transparent, um, I'd gotten a degree in information systems, but I wasn't very confident at the time, uh, you know, in my GPA and, and, and just how I felt and and how much I felt I, I didn't know at the time. And so I earned that degree. However, I pursued doing other things. Um, I was an assistant manager. Um, I was a camp counselor. I was all these other things. And instead of just, you know, having the courage to just put myself out there in the IT space, I pursued other things. And so um, eventually I found myself working for the federal government as a contractor. And that's where I got exposed to security. I got exposed to physical security, personnel security, product security. Um, I was, I was working as a CCTV operator. And so I did that for a few years and, um, thought, wow, this is, this is comfortable. This is, you know, this is good. I'm, you know, this is, this is working out okay. But an opportunity while I was there, came about where I met someone who knew someone who worked in oil and gas. So that's where my transition from the security space into the oil and gas space began to began to occur. And so um, I'm from Fort Worth, by the way, and so I was always a fan of downtown Fort Worth. I would hang out there. Um, 
I would always imagine myself working down there and not knowing what I was going to do, but I just wanted to be in downtown Fort Worth. And so as it would turn out, the person that I knew who worked at the federal facility where I was knew someone who worked in downtown. And so I submitted my resume, um, interviewed, and landed a job working as a security officer in the oil and get for this oil and gas company. And so that was my that was my that was my segue into oil and gas. However, there was still that security component attached. Um, from there, um, I learned these other aspects of security. Um, unarmed, of course. And so, you know, it was um, how to engage and interact with executives and, and ad admins and uh, just, you know, different employees and things of that nature. And so I did that for about um, two years working in the security portion. And then uh, there, was a, there was a merge that took place. A larger company acquired us. And at that point, what I was doing was going to, for lack of better expression, was going to become obsolete. And so I had the good fortune of striking up a relationship with one of the, with one of the VPs who worked in geology. So I actually interviewed for a position while still in my security uniform, and I was hired on the spot. And out of the goodness and the graciousness of the VP, I was, I was, you know, able to get a raise and, you know, start this, start this journey into a field that I had no prior knowledge of. So, you know, it was like, you know, let's, let's, let's just try and see what happens. And thankfully he took a chance on me, brought me in and um, I began to learn a lot of the different functions and tools and processes on the job. And so that's how I transitioned from security into, into the geology space. Now, um, some may wonder, okay, well, what is, you know, what is geoscience? What is, you know, what is geology? Right. So that's not my background. Um, but uh, let me, let me properly, <laughs> you know, let me properly give you know, what, you know, what geoscience is. So geoscience basically is all of your, all your natural sciences, all your sciences that have to do with the study of the earth. Um, it could be your, your, your earth science, your environmental science. Um, it could be geology. So you have all these different sciences that have to do with the interaction and the study and the behavior of all things that have happened and occurred or currently occurring on, on the earth. So that's, that's, that's it in a, in a, in a nutshell. Um, but like I said, a lot, of, a lot of what I was doing, um, I learned it on the job. And so I spent, uh, I spent about 12 years uh, in that world. And then as of last year, um, began my, what I call my extended vacation. <laughs> uh, well, I guess you know, she took a huge hit with uh, with, with COVID and, and, and everything, right. as as we all did in some way. She, everyone took a big hit, and so um, during that time off, uh, it was the, the question became: Okay, what am I going to do now? I'm no longer working in oil and gas. Um, what am I going to do? And so I knew that I needed to educate myself again. I needed I needed to do something productive with my time. And so um, I came across information for a boot camp. It was a cybersecurity boot camp um, through the University of Texas at Austin. And so it really piqued my interest because, again, I'm coming from this world of security, not necessarily cybersecurity, but I'm coming from this right. world of security. And I've had different exposures. I have diff I've had different flavors of security. But... I was always intrigued by computers as well. 
Now, this might age me a little bit, but I still remember the first computer, the first computer class that I went to when I was in elementary school. And I remember like the the, the console itself. Now, I don't know if you I don't know if you remember this, Ryan, but um, it was the Radio Shack TRS eighty. I'll let you I'll let you Google that if you've never seen that okay. before. I'll I'll let you Google it. Radio Shack TRS eight. The TRS eighty. TRS eighty. TRS eighty. I want to see. I want to think. Did I see one in real life? It might be. In, I'm sure it's in a museum somewhere. <laughs> the Smithsonian or something. Or something. I'm sure. I'm sure. But. Uh, you know, I was I was always intrigued by computers. We didn't we didn't grow up with a computer in the house, so my, the only time that that I had was at school. Okay. Um, and that's from elementary on up, through, you know, through high school. There wasn't any computer in the home, but there was computers uh, uh, at the school. So there was all that always that intrigue, and then of course, as I began working, you know, of course, that's time to spend on the computers and things like that. So anyway, fast forward. Uh, to to the boot camp, um, that's where um, I began to get, you know, that fire hose exposure to all mm-hmm. things cybersecurity, um, the different tools, um, the different certifications, the different uh, career opportunities, and, and and things like that. Like I had no idea. I knew I knew that IT in and of itself was massive, but I didn't know that cybersecurity. Right. Yeah, so it's, it's, it, it's forever expanding. Forever <laughs> expanding. But um so I spent I spent the next six months from December of twenty twenty to June of twenty one um attending the boot camp and just trying to educate myself and, and and prepare myself and just soak up as much as I could because like I said it was a it was a fire hose exposure. Um, aside from that, um, I began to use my LinkedIn a lot more. I mean, it was, it was encouraged and, and so I began to use it more and I began to kind of reach out and connect with people and, and, and meet people and look at some of the things that they were doing. And so I'm doing all these things that I probably wouldn't have done had I not been, you know, um, had I not become unemployed. Had I still been working in oil and gas and, and, and right. being comfortable, I probably wouldn't have been doing a lot of the things that I'm doing now. But I'm so thankful in that regard. I think sometimes we have to be pushed out of we have to be pushed out of a situation that's comfortable. Right. Because if we stay where it's comfortable, then it's not gonna compel us to do other things or try other things. So it's like I'm so I'm so thankful for my journey as as weird and as unconventional. And as twisting as it has been, um, but I, I hope I, I hope I addressed, yeah, like kind of De- what you definitely. wanted to know and everything. Yeah, definitely. So you, I mean, your your story uh, is, is very unique. I mean, it, it still uh, captures a lot of people are coming from all over the place, right? So like when we talked to uh, Tish uh, last week, she's coming from. Uh, uh, she was, uh, you know, airlines, airlines, like, so pilot flight attendant, like all the above. <clears> and then she made that pivot into cybersecurity. Uh, so I've, I've been it my entire, uh, military career, but at one point, uh, I was thinking about, uh, doing something different, right? So my, my undergrad, so my associates is in, uh, it, my undergrad is in, uh, social psychology. So totally pivot. Right. And then I, I, uh, I, lucked up and I received a job doing something in cybersecurity and it kept me in. And then I made that hard pivot back. So now my, my graduates in cybersecurity information insurance, uh, you know, with, with certifications and what have you. So, uh, if anything, uh, I think it, it, you bring something unique to the table, right. Uh, in, in having life experience, like if people come out straight out of college, like their, their focus is, is on, uh, nothing but cyber was not knocking them. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. Uh, right but they have a, a, a laser beam focus sometimes uh, mm-hmm. when you have people like when I was talking to Tish, like, Hey, you, you have been trained to deal with situations that no one has been trained to deal with. Right. You know, you're, you're metal two thirty thousand 30,000 feet in the air, something goes wrong. Like it gives you a unique perspective. You're, you're probably also really calm under pressure. <laughs> right. <laughs> so oh yeah. Things you can do. Right. And in yeah. your case, uh, like you said, you already had an IT background. 
Uh, but then you went into uh, security, CCTV and all that good stuff. Uh, and that all that still ties back into cyber. Like there, there's a, um, uh, you know, security manager that deals with a lot of that type of uh, stuff. Like physical security comes first because it doesn't matter how, how protected your network is. If you don't have ballards up or some kind of uh, perimeter, I'm, I'm driving mm. straight in that thing. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> your yep. server, your ATM, whatever, uh, without the proper physical security. So they, you have something unique you can bring to the uh, the table as well. And then just having the uh, the, the passion. Uh, so like you said, uh, you know, things change for you and you had to get out of your comfort zone. Uh, and that's that's growth. So, you know, you 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 uh, latch on to something that really interests you and it kind of come in full circle. So now you're coming back into technology. Absolutely. And I think I think the other thing that I want to add to is that same that's that that lack of confidence that I touched on in the beginning when I when I graduated with my degree from undergrad many, many moons ago. I think it's I think it's the opposite now. And it touches on that full circle because having having endured the boot camp and having had having all the exposure that I gained from that and then making you know making the connections and building the network that I now have and just communicating with people that I haven't even met before and to get the support from them on different things that I've done or I've completed or or you know things of that nature like it's it's built my confidence and I think I think that confidence is still it's still growing one of the things that I, I really appreciate, what I really appreciate with, and I'm a huge fan of in this cybersecurity space is the support. Like this community, like I didn't know this community existed. Um, granted, no, no, family is, no family is perfect, right? right. But this, this cybersecurity space, it's, it's been really eye-opening. Like, to 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 feel that energy and support from total strangers like it's 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 been immense and it's been it's been powerful and it's and it's it's increased it's increasing my confidence right no no doubt so yeah like uh the reason that i, I kind of started the podcast so I, it, it's our timelines almost sync up right so i uh, i'm currently overseas uh i got here in november of last year so it's been a year now and i started the podcast because uh in the military, we're very diverse. Like you're going to see a lot of people, a lot of different situations, and you get lots and lots of experience and things that are vastly different. And then I started looking at, so what I'm going to do when I transition back in the civilian side, I want to do cybersecurity, right? So I started looking into it and I started seeing the numbers and I'm like, oh, it's not, it's not very diverse. <laughs> it's not, there isn't, there's a lot of opportunity, but there, there are some, some, uh, like you said, it's not perfect, right? So there are some gatekeepers, like uh, they they do ask you for experience um, and things of that nature that outstrips uh, uh, reality sometimes. So they're like, hey, we want you to have like five years of experience before you take this entry level job. Well, you know, how did I get that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, had, yeah. I had to get an entry level job first, right? Like, yeah. so a lot of that stuff doesn't make sense. And it's starting to work itself out uh, only because you have huge initiatives coming from, like you said, you you uh, received a boot camp. Uh, where you're at and those are starting to spring up all over the place like there's a, a huge demand from the industry to get more people in the pipe because there's just not enough people like just period so you'll start to see some of that stuff start to slip away um, even though they may say it you still should apply anyway uh, because they're not gonna be able to find that person like it doesn't even make logical sense right. um, yeah. but uh, with all that being said I think you you definitely bring a unique perspective we were already connected um before uh, Tish uh, recommended you, because she recommended you, and I was like, I know that name. Uh, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I wanted to click to connect with you, and I was like, I'm already connected. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So every every everything worked out. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm definitely glad to have you on the show. Uh, but just like I said, Tish, so I, I've, I've spent a good majority of time asking you questions. So what what questions do you have for me? Okay, so um, I guess the one question that comes to mind is. Simple question, like what what book or books are you reading right now that kind of keep you motivated, that kind of keep you help you to kind of stay on the pulse of of the things that you're that you're focusing on or just on the on the industry like in general? Gotcha. So 
I get it from multiple multiple different arenas, right? So for the show, I like to keep it as um, uh, timely as possible. So I'm always every week I'm digging in articles. I'm trying to see what what's the latest, like what happened, what kind of breaches, and I try to have variety, right? So I don't want to talk about the same like we know the same companies, which I, I don't like naming uh, every week have the same problems with either diversity or they have the same problems with, with uh, uh, breaches and things of that nature. So I'm looking for something else, right? I'm trying to always see like, what is the future hold? What is something different that's happening uh, with, with, in the political arena? Like what is happening? And I always try to find articles uh, that deal with people who look like us, right? Like what, what is the industry doing about us only being uh, 9% uh, of the, uh, the uh the community or um uh this week we talked with uh, uh Aisha Hollins about uh a article basically saying like stop calling us unicorns like it was like 25% of cyber is uh female stop calling us unicorns because unicorns don't exist like, like right yeah yeah <laughs> you know what I mean like yeah. you're 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 doing the opposite like you think you're putting us on the pedestal and making it like saying that like, we stand out but she was like we're already here like so you know i mean come up with a different uh naming convention or, or what have you so i always like to stay um relevant on the show and then when it comes to my own uh training so a well once you start to uh rank in the, the certifications I, I warn you now you you got to stay up on it because it, you, you have to pay the bill either it's going to be a tax of your time or it's going to be an actual bill <laughs> to stay certified in something so like with um my PMP is, is coming time. Like I'm, I'm cranking through, um, different project management, uh, uh, what are they called? Um, like not audio files, but like podcasts and things of that nature. I'm, I'm digging through, uh, training material. I'm trying to work on my green belt. Um, not because necessarily I need it, uh, cause it's a different, right. So, uh, PMP is through PMI, uh, green belts through, uh, CPI, but those count towards my PM, PMP, uh, credits. So, why not kill two birds with one stone, learn something new and, you know, m- maintain my certification. Same thing with SISP. That's due uh, 2023 and I've been slacking. Like, so I'm, I've been, you know, consistently raking in, uh, you know, knowledge, but it's not documented. So I got to go back through and figure out like, what did I, what, what did I learn and what I can I tie it to? Uh, Cause you got to pay that tax. Um, and now I'm moving towards cloud uh, cause cloud is my biggest blind spot. So I, I've been doing IT for almost 20 years uh, on the networking side. So network infrastructure is my bread and butter. Um, that's what the Air Force paid me to do uh, and continues to pay, pay me to do. And then before I moved over to cybersecurity, which I, I currently do. Um, so I have all the physical stuff, all the on-premise stuff, but lo and behold, everybody's moving to the cloud. Everybody's moving to the cloud. The cloud yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what, what do I know about the cloud and how can I get to a point where I know enough that I can secure it? So that's my next project, right? And that's it's just something that keeps me interested because a lot of it is similar, but a lot of it is different, right? So I think it's just having that healthy mix. Like you see people who stay down one lane become experts of it, which is great. Um, the military has kind of um, taught me to be a jack of all trades. Like uh, I'll never be, you know, a, a quote unquote expert in like have like 15 degrees and just this one subject um, because I don't like to put all my eggs in one basket. And I, I, I will get bored. So, right. you know what I mean? Like, what are, what are these other technologies that I know something of, but, you know what I mean, still a blind spot for me? Because at the end of the day, you don't know what is going to be available to you. Um, so it's good to ha- be able to speak intelligently to a bunch of different categories of tech and cyber. So, Yeah, because it's, I mean, it's, I mean, what, I, what I've learned is just, again, like how immense the cybersecurity space is how i mean there's like infinite there's like infinite numbers of disciplines within the space and like for me you know right now i'm focusing on i'm focusing on the cloud i'm trying to i'm trying to you know i'm trying to relate to the cloud i'm trying to understand it so i'm doing some studying things that nature um primarily on the amazon amazon platform okay but um like there's so many other things that I'm interested in as well. Like I'm trying to focus on cloud, but you know, there's still other things that, that interest me as well. Like, especially like digital forensics. Right. And there's so many different things that you can do with digital forensics. There's so many areas that you can focus in. Um, and it just, 
it can really feed your curiosity. If you're curious about something, you'll you'll research and figure out how it how it works. Where where can I get this data from? Um, what you know, what open source intelligence can I gather? Like, you know, what can I do? What other tools are out there that I can leverage? And I think that's the beauty. I think that's another beauty of um, cyber and IT as well. Is like if you can if you can stay in a place where you're willing to learn and it be an ongoing thing, like you're you're in the right place. And I think that's what really draws me to it. Like I have so many LinkedIn learning courses that I have saved. Like last year I wasn't doing this. I, I like it's it's you know it's it, it's amazing. It's amazing. But with that being said, you know, it's one thing for us to 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 collect certs and 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 save all these different courses, but it's another thing to really just you know focus in and like practice them, implement them, and 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 use them. Right. You know, so I think like I think for me that's that's one of the things too. Just because, for example, when I took the Security Plus and I failed it the first time, but I passed the, it the second time. Immediately, I, I was excited, but then somewhere in there later on, I began to realize, wow, I realized how much more I still didn't know. It, granted, I passed the exam, but there was this thought of, wow, I still have, I still have a long ways right. to go in my respect. I think it'll forever be that case. And I'm okay with that because I can always learn something. There's like, there's, there's always something to be learned. Technology is going to evolve. Your, your types of attacks are going to evolve as technology um, evolves, which means you can only, you know, you can only try to keep learning and stay abreast of what's going on. Um, So my goal is to just be good about doing that. Yeah. Yeah, just just stay stay passionate, or at least go down lanes that you're passionate about, right? Like, so mm-hmm. people will chase a certain cert because it pays well. But that, <clears> I mean, that's 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 great and all, but if you're not passionate about it, uh, when people speak to you, they'll be able to tell. You know, what yeah. I mean, like uh, there's certain stuff that, um, uh, for whatever reason, like I I'm always interested in compliance, compliance and uh, uh, governance, and that's the most boring stuff on the planet. I don't know what it is, but I'm just like. Uh, whenever I learn about a a new um, uh, framework that's being dropped or an update to like uh, uh, to the FISMA or the NIST uh, uh, frameworks, I, I I read about it and it's stuff that will put you to sleep. But uh, if it comes up in conversation, like it's something I'm passionate about, like okay, we can talk about this. Like um, at one point, I was pursuing forensics, so you know I got my CEH. Um, and then I was looking at getting uh, GCFA, which I'm still thinking about doing. I, I looked down at the books. <laughs> I'm <started, laughs> um, still working on it, but there's a lot of material, right? Uh, so I, I would say don't put too much on your plate because then you'll you'll be all over the place, right? Like so, for me, I try to keep it down to to two or three things that I'm pursuing um, max, and then I map out a goal. So like. Uh, I, I meant to do it this week because this was a long weekend. I did not do it. Uh, so I have to do it next weekend. But what are my 2022 goals? Um, and not just, uh, you know, I want to get this, I want to get that, but when do I want to get it by? So I actually have like a roadmap, right? So we, we call them SMART goals. Uh, I'm sure other people use it as well, right? So specific, measurable, attainable, uh, uh, realistic, and time bound. So what are those goals that I want to pursue? Like, what do I want to get before uh, next May? You know, what do I want to get before the end of next year? So like the last one on my list for this year is to get uh, Azure uh, Cloud Fundamentals. So I only have so much more time left to, to knock that one out. And then once I do that, you know, what is my next step? Like, am I going to pursue the next, you know, Microsoft Cloud Cert? Do I want to pivot to, um, to you know, AWS and, you know, learn how they do business? Um, but you don't want to do too much. Too I have much. A, huge list of things that I want, but I'm just like, which one, which, which two of these? <laughs> am I right. Gonna um, Pick something, hone in on it for a little bit, you know, yeah. get, get, get familiar with it, get acclimated with it. And then once, once you arrive at that, at that level, yeah. then you can, 
afford yourself to, you know, to, you know, include something else. Right, like right exactly. now for me, like the, the main thing that I'm really, that I'm really honed in on is, is, is AWS right now. Like my goal is to, is to take the, uh, the CCP by the end of the year. And I'm giving my, I'm probably, I'm probably giving myself more time than what I should, but that's my target is, is end of the year CCP. It, it probably shouldn't take that long. It should probably take like another couple of weeks or so. But I'm giving myself the end of the year to to okay. to to take that to take that uh, exam and, and earn that certification. Yeah, definitely. There's it, just so many because there's just so many different like facets to it. So. Right, right, and then as you know, getting the, the experience. So you, there's a lot of labbing up that you can do because um, at the end of the day, like barring uh, degree and certification, because we we I don't know if you if you look on LinkedIn doesn't do it too much, but like a. Uh, Twitter, I mean, Twitter is rough. Everybody is always battling about, you know, what's, my degree is better than your certification versus your experience, and yada, yada, yada. That experience, experience is king. Experience is what gets your foot in the door. Uh, all the other stuff comes after experience. So like after you pursue it or while you're pursuing it, uh, if you can get your hands on real gear, you know, do that. But if not, then simulate it, lab it up. Um, because that's what they're going to ask you about when in, in the interview, like, well, how much experience do you have with this? Because they want to know how much OJT they need to give you once you get your foot in the door. Because they, ultimately, you're going to give you some kind of on-job training. Um, that's just the way these these things work, right? Every company is slightly different. They do things slightly different. Um, I mean, I, I worked for McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's, right? They're all they were all different when I was in high school. <laughs> like, like yeah, you still put the patty on the on the grill, right? But we all have different procedures on how we do it. Um, and it's the same thing comes with, with tech, like every company is going to do it slightly differently, but the more you can bring to the table, you know, like with your life experience, as well as like, okay, uh, I've pivoted higher into this and I have the certification, but I also have hours working with, you know, cloud or what have you. Uh, and I can, I can speak to it. Like, and they can tell in the interview how passionate you are about it. So to that point, I, I know what I want to ask you. Um, when you were, when you were, when you were starting out, your career in IT and cybersecurity, mm -hmm. how much time would you say you spent um, labbing? So uh, a little bit of a, a, a I guess, a, a difference. So again, the military gives you a, a lot of latitude. So um, when we go through our technical training, they were hands-on gear. So I had seven months to get through um, not knowing anything about networks to learning uh, basic hardware and putting my hands on it, building PCs and all that good stuff, configuring switches and routers, uh, learning subnetting. Uh, and I used to be a computer science major way, way back in the day. Uh, and I dropped out. So, <laughs> so math, math is not my strong point, but I can subnet. <laughs> um, and then actually like there, there was a capstone right at the end. Like we need, you have to build a config build and configure a network from scratch to include telephones, PCs, uh, networking, sending traffic, all that stuff. So it's a little bit different, right? Uh, and, and anybody else in the, in the real world would have much more time than seven months to learn how to, to do it from scratch. But again, it, you know, it's, it's the benefit of um, Department of Defense. Like they want you to be able to do uh, everything. And we only have a finite, finite amount of time to do it, but we have plenty of money and bodies to throw at it. <laughs> so uh, we'll get you through. If we don't get you through, we'll get you another job. We'll get somebody else through. So um, so for, for me, um, the hardest part, because I, I was always good with like, so I, I don't know our, our age difference because uh, you look younger than me, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I, the I, PC I, you're I, talking I, about, I did not have. So I had an I, I don't, I, look, I don't Look, I don't know if it's a good idea to, to make my age public. I don't know. I don't want to go yeah, through the whole age know, discrimination know. thing. Like, I know, I know you and I would be good, but for anyone who might watch it, be like, "Oh no, he's too old. Uh, we can't now." I don't want to give the name. The same, right? Right? But black don't crack. So, <laughs> <laughs> for me, it was Apple IIe, right? So my aunt had an Apple IIe. She was a school teacher. I used to go over there and play Cairo San Diego on the big floppy disk. And uh, when it was big not acting disc. right, yeah, when it was not acting right, she would let me take it apart and tinker with it because uh, she had she had a bunch of you know um, uh, spare PCs and what have you. So I already kind of had that in me. 
but when it came to the networking and subnetting and all that stuff, that was all brand new to me. Um, so it, it took me a while to get there, but just like you, um, when I was done, I didn't feel like I could do it, but I didn't feel as confident as I felt I should feel. So I went back to the pitch, right? So that's how I pursued um, uh, CCNA because I, I had a, a, a coworker who had his CCNA when I arrived on station, uh, my first duty station, and he was super sharp. So I was like, I want to be like him. I want to I want to be able to do what he does. Um, so I started pursuing the CCNA, and then that helped me to build and to learn the things that I thought I had gaps on. And then I felt more confident because I didn't just have a CCNA. I felt like I was a CCNA, if that makes sense. And I think that's a, a lot of people. Like you might get the certification, but you're like, but I don't have the the ex- time and experience on it, but I, ha- I have the knowledge of it. And it's just a matter of filling those gaps in. Um, I think I think maybe I think maybe having a sense of feeling like you can truly own what you've yes truly own what you learned and, and things like that. Yeah, and like I was telling Tish, it, it breaking it. When you break something <clears throat> and then you have to fix it, like that's when you get the, the most confidence, in, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, I've taken a couple network, a couple production networks down. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw that, I saw that interview. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was hilarious. And it builds, it builds confidence though. Like, uh, obviously I, I have the latitude to do that. So don't, if you're out there, don't, don't do that <laughs> if you can help it. But at some point you're going to do it. It's going to happen. Regardless if you're in configuration management, you're in networking. Uh, I'm sure it happens in the cloud all the time. Uh, but try to break your stuff first and that way you can quickly rebuild anything that you uh, you happen to take down in the real world. So I have plenty of experience on breaking my own network. So, <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, I, you know, with that, you now know what to do and what not to do. So it, you know, so no, so no experience is ever is ever lost, right? Like no. there's something that you don't want to happen, but when they do happen, you know, you, you can, you can take something from it because now you know how to, how to better manage that right. situation. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it, I, again, like, yeah, lab, lab it up as much as you can and you will break stuff and then you will learn from, from your experience. And then when you do learn something new, uh, the ability to teach. So um, like if I can learn it, do it, and then be able to explain it to someone who's never done it before, Mm-hmm. then then I feel the most confident. Like I think that's the, the highest level of, of achievement when it comes to whether it be IT or cybersecurity. Like when you can when you can break it down, like uh so right now I, I teach at the collegiate level, but before then, like just being in the military, like that's what you do. So you learn something, you pass it down. You learn something new, you pass it down. Or you write a standard operating procedure or you write a, a TTP uh tactics, techniques, and uh, procedures. Like you, you are always in the, uh, the learning and then passing it down phase. Cause you have to, you have to replace, like you have to, you have to basically build the next person up in line. Like, cause you, what could happen? Like I could have to go somewhere, have to deploy, you know, God forbid something were to happen to me. Like I need to make sure the next person is able to do it. Uh, and then that just followed me through to now where I, I, I teach. So, um, that's my, my class, she was a psychology major, had nothing to do with IT. And I was teaching an uh, IT fundamentals class. And I would just have to change the way I uh, pursued uh, the the agenda. Because like the people who had IT experience would absorb it quickly. But in her case, she was very intelligent, but she's just not techie. So I had to be able to, to, to you know, make it more practical. And I think if you could do that, that, that's like when you see the light bulb turn on, and somebody learns something new, you're just like, yeah, I got it. Like, I, yeah. I understand what I'm trying to teach because they now understand what I what I taught them. Yeah, there's that there's that factor of just being able to find a way to relate to information, and if you can relate to information, then now you 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 then have a tool that you can use to help someone else learn how to relate to information. Yeah, if that if that makes sense, because I think a lot of times because you you hear about you hear about transferable skills, you know you you know. For, you know, for people who are coming from different, different careers, totally unrelated careers, or, or at least as how they perceive it, but the skills, those skills themselves that are transferable is what makes it, is what makes two contrasting careers relatable. It's the, it's yeah. those, it's the skills within. Um, and I, I kind of, I kind of lost my, my, my point. I was, I was so excited to, to talk about that, but, yeah. um, Oh, okay. 
so it, it's almost it's it's like no experience is ever really lost mm -hmm. um again if you can if you can find a, a way to take something that you've done and relate it to i t and cybersecurity that kind of helps different concepts to kind of stick yeah yeah definitely because uh, like uh like with you and tish and probably millions of other people we all have relatable experiences that that go right into cybersecurity. like for you when it comes to um information systems and uh uh, perimeter defense or intrusion detection systems and things of that nature. Like you've you've worked around those things, or you've you've applied certain skills to those things, and now full circle, you're able to to do it on cyber side as well. Um, yeah, sure. And then yeah, because like, you 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 mentioned something uh, off camera uh, about forensics, like so like that's a relatable skill. Like you you did some of that on the outside before you got into cyber, right? Now that's actually so so I, I you know. Actually, let me let me kind of rewind back. Like, at the time that I was working in the in the federal government as a contractor, I probably didn't even it probably didn't dawn on me that I was that I was doing things that were relatable or even discussed in the cybersecurity space. Because during that time, you know, as far as I was concerned, I wasn't working in a cybersecurity space. However, I was doing things that I later discovered um, were actually affiliated and, and talked about and are ongoing in the cybersecurity space, even though it was in this environment of the federal government and, you know, being a CCTV operator, like, I think that's, that's, that was the other thing that was kind of encouraging about it. Like, maybe perhaps I was doing things at the time, not knowing that the cybersecurity space incorporated those things. Yeah, definitely. And with you actually working for the federal government, like it might be something you might want to look into uh, when it comes to uh, job entry. So like, like when I was talking to Tish, like 8570 is like the holy grail, right? Like in order to touch a DOD network, you have to have 8570 qualifications. So uh, your, your tier ones are your... Um, uh, ITF plus, your net plus, your A plus, your tier twos are your, your SEC plus, your CYSA, your CCNA security. Uh, your tier threes are like your, your CIS P's and, and, uh, I, I C, CISM and all that good stuff as well. So you, you already have a certification. You already have previous federal experience. It may be something you want to, uh, look into like, uh, either through Glassdoor or through, um, uh, LinkedIn jobs, just type in your social and then, or not social, <laughs> type in your, zip code. there you go, type in your zip code and 8570 and you'll see stuff pop up for uh, companies that require the certification in order to do the work they do with the government. So you, you already have a leg up on some people. So another question, do you, do you have any interests that aren't necessarily they aren't necessarily IT interests, but they are like hobbies or things outside of your uh, outside of your world of IT that you do that you still feel tie into the IT space for you. Like, so a, a lot of them are are like one to one correlations because I I've been so so uh enveloped in in cyber for so long right so like podcasting can be done without cyber but my my podcast has everything to do with cyber uh but i enjoy it like i like talking to people i like networking uh i'm pretty introverted outside of this but like i, I love this uh uh because it's 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 like talking about somebody about sports to me like that's how it feels like i'm a big bills fan right so i'm from buffalo I'm a big Bills fan. Like you want to talk about Bills, talk about the Bills. But this also feels very similar. Like, okay, you want to talk about certain certifications or certain domains. Like I, I feel that passion about it. Uh, I play video games. Uh, been been playing since I can remember. Like Carmen San Diego and the Apple IIe <laughs> or Mavis Beacon. You know what I mean? Like um, uh, I'm trying to think outside of cyber. Uh, I I work out a lot, so every day I'm I'm trying to do something with strength and in, in, uh in running. So I run almost every single day. 
Um, I try to put in a good 40, 50, sometimes 60 miles a month um, because it helps me clear my head, right? I can think about anything else while I'm on that treadmill. (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, But usually there's a TV up, right? Because I'm running indoors. So I'm I'm usually watching something uh, that they're playing on TV. But uh, I just like, I like get burning energy before work. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I read a lot of uh, sci-fi. So or listen. So I, I say read, but I usually listen to audiobooks. Uh, but like sci-fi is my thing. Uh, right now I'm listening to uh, Stephen King's The Institute. It's got my my interest. So I've been listening to that. Um, watching a bunch of uh, like Picard is one of my my uh, my shows. is my jam on uh, Paramount Plus or whatever. Uh, and then there's a couple on Apple uh, Foundation and um, Invasion. So I like I like so oh, yeah, invasion, horror. invasion, is good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, a lot of that type of stuff. Uh, anything Marvel, I'm, I'm down for. So I watch all that stuff. Oh yeah, um, yeah. You got to You got to watch uh, Shang Chi. You got to watch that. I did. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, so I'm I'm on. I I work on a base. Uh, I live on a base. I should say. So like, the, there's a theater. So I actually got to see it in theater uh, while I was here, which was great. Um, so just regular old nerd man anime video games comics well you know so i so i i was i was asking that question because i don't i don't know if you i don't know if you've experienced this but for me you know ever since like i said ever since doing the boot camp and and thereafter it's like i kind of i kind of i kind of look at certain things a little differently like if gotcha. there's a move if there's a movie that has a scene where you know someone's trying to you know right. uh crack some code or or they're actually in the press of encrypting some code you know you know it, it's it's like when you see scenes like that yeah you you kind of look at them differently yeah, it's like, sometimes it's like nails on chalkboard like try try watching hackers like you remember oh. watching hackers like try watching it now <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I, I like i went like i went i went all the way back <laughs> i was watching um i remember watching um was it war it was war games war games yeah yeah and it's like I was so I was so fascinated by it because at the time we're talking you know we're talking like the '80s, right? You know, yeah. so it's like the 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 technology that was being used at that time was like at the time it was like the state of the art, you know, yeah. thing to use. And it just is it's just fascinating because it's not state of the art now. Like it's it's absolutely like obsolete pretty much. Yeah technology is involved but so it's like i i just i just find myself like looking at certain things different like scenes where there's you know programming involved or espionage is happening it's like okay what what you know what what technologies are they using like what's the what's the what's the storyline like i find myself watching those kinds of little things a little a little differently and then like now it's it's almost as if if i'm not if I'm not watching something that can remotely teach me, then it's just, it just feels like a waste of time. Oh, I see what you're saying. That's, that's, that comes with the, uh, the passion. So like, like uh, you're drawn to things that you're passionate about. So like, like cyber is like your, that's, that's, that's your baby right now. Right. So you're always going to be driven towards that in some regard, which is good. Uh, I, I would say over time, it won't, it won't not be your passion, but you will find things to get you out of that mindset. Uh, so you don't feel like it's consuming all of your, your time. So that, that will come, but that, that won't be for years. <laughs> yeah. Cause yeah. Cause it, there's, cause there's like a, there's like a, uh, like an anxiousness. It's like, if I'm not, if I'm not in front of the computer trying to figure out how to make sense of something, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm doing something else, if, I, if I'm trying to sit and watch TV, like, it doesn't have the same feel because in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, man, let me, let me go. I want to go, I want to go figure out how to, I want to yeah. figure out GitHub. Like I want to figure out how to better manage my repositories. You know, maybe right. I need, I need to build, you know, I need to, I need to work on my Python. Like I, I'm, th- I'm thinking about those things in the back of my head. If, if I'm, if I'm doing something else, that's just not yeah, worth my time. I'm thinking about, how I could be spending my time doing this, this, and this. That's right. kind of how my mind's been working here lately. It's like, if I'm not learning something that's worthwhile 
and I'm not doing something that's just not worthwhile, that which I am doing is just it, it's even it's even more less significant. Right, right. That makes so sense. I, I would I would warn you, like uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, you have to sometimes disengage only because uh, like nowadays I feel guilt sometimes when I'm not studying or learning something new. So like, it's like, okay, let me enjoy this uh, PS5. I just bought my son, sit here and play this video game. And then like you're 20 minutes into it, you're just like, ah, I should be studying something. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you have to learn. Like it, it, it's something that, especially during a pandemic, oh man, like you have all this, uh, not, not necessarily free time, but you have all of this more efficient time, right? So I was still doing work during the pandemic, but I was able to multitask. Uh, so I'm, you know, I'm doing work, um, I'm attending meetings, but I can also have another screen up and I can study. And then oh, now I'm, back, I'm right back into it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when do you disengage? Uh, you just have to find some time to, to do that as well. Like, you know, uh, and my thing is the treadmill, like every morning, like, I don't care what is going on. I don't care if I wake up late. <laughs> mm-hmm. but like now I need to hurry up and get on the treadmill uh, just so I can burn some of the energy off before I get, get to the, uh, through the door. Uh, Cause when I was back in the States, that was the, um, the um commute so i'd have an hour hour and a half commute back home that's how i disengaged that gave me time to unwind from the eight nine hours of of work i had to deal with to when i got home so i can you know enjoy time with my family it was that that car ride uh but again i had to make myself listen to audiobooks because i would like now i'm listening to this podcast about (laughs) you know something like whether it be cloud or PMP or something like that. But I'm like, no, 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 that's me still studying. <laughs> and let me listen to the Stephen King book real quick so I can disengage. Just just for an hour, get that time back. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything that still, is there anything that still overwhelms you from a IT cybersecurity perspective, even though you have, you have a wealth of experiences and 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 educations. Mm-hmm. Is there still anything, or has there ever been anything that's just still that was still just overwhelming um, to you in, in any in any way, shape, or form? And so, if so, how how did you kind of work through that? Got you. So it kind of goes back to what you were saying. Like after you finish your security plus, you now had awareness right you can see a little bit further you can see how much you don't know that that great expanse of just the void you need to fill with information because cybersecurity is ever expanding there's always going to be something new uh i get that sometimes it's like staring into the abyss (laughs) you're like the more i'm aware of i what i do know the more i know what i i'm trying to figure out how to say it the more awareness i become begin to have the more i know what i don't know it's like i need to absorb more information like because it's just there's i will never know enough is is kind of the problem and i have awareness of it now um but the other one is imposter syndrome so uh uh yeah um like this helps me like having this conversation like uh talking to you um and not not to be boastful or to to brag on myself but just to to let some of it out like like anything I can share with you. And then again, it's like that, uh, that teachable moment, right? Like I may be able to just say something that you didn't think about or a different perspective that you're not looking at. And I see the light bulb cut on, right. That makes me feel better. Not in a glo- gloating type of way, but just like, right. okay, I do know something. <laughs> right. Right. Like, whether it be the experience or the book knowledge or what have you, like I, I get a lot of that out of my system through networking, through LinkedIn, through the podcast. Uh, it makes me feel better about what I do know, uh, knowing that I don't know everything. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You could easily come on the, on the show and, and stump me. And I'd be like, mm-hmm. you know what? It's a complete blind spot. I don't know how that works, but we can kind of talk through it. And then, uh, you know, we can get to some level of resolution to kind of give you the answer you're looking for. But when, when I nail it, I'm just like, you know what? All right. Today was a good day. <laughs> but yeah, yeah I mean, the foster syndrome is always going to be there though. This is, it's just, it's just part, it's just part of it. Like, the reason why the reason why I asked that because someone like me who is still in his infancy, you know, 
you know, as it as it pertains to trying to move into actually working and functioning officially in the cybersecurity space. Right. Like I want I just wonder I just wonder what are some of the thoughts of someone who I would consider it being a seasoned professional, you know, if you still have some of those those thoughts or you you know or do you still encounter like those 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 brief moments of where there are still some things that are overwhelming for you um, yeah. and how do you and how do you you know how do you work through it yeah yeah exactly i mean it's i think that's with every every career field right like some sometimes i'll come to a room and people will say something and i have no clue what they're talking about i'm just like that acronym didn't hit quite right you know what i mean like so uh you i for me i just I'm, I'm humble about it. Like, Hey, I don't know exactly what that is. Can you explain it to me? Some people will try to learn through context. I, I try it sometimes, but if, if I'm not getting it, Hey, I need to ask you questions. Cause like, I'm more, I'll be more um, mortified by trying to sound smart mm-hmm. and, and coming off dumb than mm-hmm. just, just admitting like, Hey, I'm not quite grasping what you're putting down. And then typically when they break it down, then I'm like, oh, okay, that's similar to this, or that's like that, or, Oh, I didn't, I never caught it that before. Um, cause there's every acronym has three, four meanings. So you, you run into somebody who would be talking about something totally different. You'd be like, I not tracking what you're saying. <laughs> like that, that is not how I use that acronym. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's about humility. Like you, I, I, I see it sometimes it's very, it's a very small pocketed community, but people will come on very arrogant and they are very intelligent. Don't, don't get me wrong, but that the pride comes before the fall. Like if you don't know something, let people know you don't know something. Right. It's, like, that, it's not going to damage you. You know what I mean? Like just like, hey, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not quite grasping what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, and I think, I think that's probably like, that's probably like your best, your best defense, if you will, is just to, you know, it's just to say, hey, I've, I've heard of that, I've, I've had some exposure to that, but I'm not as Versed in it to the degree that I would like to be to be able to, you know, truly like engage in this conversation with you. So I, I may need some time to kind of go back and revisit and and understand, or I might need your help to kind of help me soak this up and 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 understand it. So like I said, I'm still like I'm I'm still in my infancy right now, and there's there's so many different things that I'm interested in, but um, yeah. I, I, th- I think I think that I think that for me, if I lay my transparency out there, I'm just like, hey, I I don't I don't quite know. I've I've heard that. I yeah. think that would be like one of the one of the wisest things that I could do for myself is just to lay it after that. No, I, I don't quite know just yet. Yeah, and I think people appreciate that vulnerability. You know what I mean? Like whether it be from a leadership standpoint. Like every now and then I'll have somebody who works for me ask me or, or ask me something. I'm, I'm like, I, I don't know what the answer is, but I will go find it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, the same thing comes comes uh, earlier on in your career. Like you will be Googling a lot of things. So, <laughs> and that will last you a lifetime. <laughs> when so, <laughs> so so when that so when when that was 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 mentioned during the boot camp, I was just like, Oh wow, it, it kind of it kind of took some weight off my shoulders. Like I'm 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 not going to be expected to just know everything because who right. just knows everything, right? So it's like, wow, if if people if people who are teaching me right now in this boot camp who are currently working in the field, if they're finding a, if they're finding themselves having to like Google some stuff and 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 ask around and things like that, it's like, okay, maybe this won't be so bad after I don't have to worry about necessarily trying to go it alone in a in a in a sense so that's that's comforting yeah yeah google reddit um all the above like you'll join forums so uh i'm I'm in a a bunch of different groups uh and then i I just ask those questions like hey you know i ran have you ever run into this before or you know like what what product are you using to monitor this um you're gonna you're gonna always be expanding your network and always asking those questions um it's, it's just nothing wrong with it. Like, I, I, again, there's some people who who feel like they, they can't um, show vulnerability or weakness. Um, and, and when it comes to IT or cybersecurity, like, you're not going to know everything. It's just too big. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about, uh, right, and like, as we're talking, like, my mind is just racing on different things to ask. And yeah, 
ask and, and, and share and, and things like that. And so I think about like if you, did you if you I don't know if you grew up playing sports or anything like that, but if you've ever played like, you know, uh, team sports and, and things like that, like no one person that I know of can just do everything like you can right. accomplish so much with with the, with the team. But being 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 in the military, you know that you need you need your entire unit to get an objective accomplished. Right. Right. Um, so. So to know that that. To know that that similar um, philosophy exists in cybersecurity as well, like that's 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 also that's also helpful because no, like there's too much information for any one person you right. know, to know. So to be able to to be able to go to someone and say, hey, like I don't I don't know about this, um, I don't know how to quite, you know, handle this situation. What what do you think? You know, that's that's also comforting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, you know, you still do your research and whatnot, which which you can, but there's only so much you can sometimes gra- gather from from Google. Like sometimes you will hit something, you'll be the first one to ask that question. <laughs> you're mm-hmm. like, no one's asked this before. Um, but then you know you have to rely on your SMEs uh, or who are just people who just have more experience than you. They've they've been doing it for longer. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean they're smarter. They just have way more experience. Um, and those are the people who then break off some of that knowledge. Like, oh, okay, you can do this. Or you could try, did you try doing that? Um, it, it, I think it's an uh, awesome community, um, like uh, especially with the expansion because you have so many different people coming from so many different backgrounds now. Like just the, the amount of information sharing is just crazy right now. If you could give yourself, I know, I know the advice that I would, I would, I know the advice that I would give myself given all that I've experienced up to this point, but what advice would you give yourself if you could go back to like any age of your younger self, like okay. what advice would you, would you give? Man, cause I kind of want to change uh, anything to be honest with you. Cause I I've been, I've been blessed beyond, beyond, uh, like when you look back on the different steps, like the things you wanted to do and you just couldn't figure out why you couldn't do them, like you felt defeated. And then you look at which, where you're at now and you're like, oh, that that was a, a life lesson. I learned something there. Um, I, I had that throughout my entire career because I mean, I could have got out years ago and, and gone the uh, psychology route, but I don't think I'll be as fulfilled uh, as I am now. Or if I had gotten out, I would have missed out like um, over the past three years I've been to seven different countries and got to live in the two of them, three of them. I'm in my third country now. And I gotten out 10 years ago that would never happen. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But if I, if I had to do anything, I would say, I would tell myself to be more disciplined when it came to math. Um, It's something I hated since forever, since, since (laughs) timetables. And it, and it it doesn't, as an adult, where i'm at right now it doesn't make sense to me like it's it's something that like there's only one right answer all you gotta do is just learn the formula and get to the right answer but i fought it so hard uh growing up that uh i felt as though it closed a lot of doors for me so like not a computer science major anymore which i think is a good thing (laughs) because i won't know where i'm at but uh there's a few other things that like programs and things like that i could not apply for because my my math scores were so uh, atrocious and uh I look back now, I was like, if I had just put more time in, uh, in, in uh, middle school and high school, like how much could I have learned? How much more disciplined would I have been when I got to the point I am now? But again, I'd be changing things. So that, that's the thing. That's the crazy thing, right? I think, I think I'm supposed to be where I'm at right now. Uh, and the only way to get there would be to go on the path that I went. Because uh, I like, when I was in, in middle school, I wanted to be an uh, architect. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's a huge departure from where I'm at right now. Uh, and it's thankfully because of the major I shouldn't have been in enlisting, uh, stay, sticking with it for uh, almost two decades. And now I'm here. Now I feel really um, confident, not comfortable. Cause like you, like you alluded to before, like if like that's, I, I want to be uncomfortable. I want to, I want that growth. That's where you get growth at is when you're uncomfortable. So I'm, I'm 
I jumped on this podcast and I um, started pursuing different um, uh, certifications. And now I'm going through some uh, uh, entrepreneur classes um, because that makes me feel uncomfortable. Like working for somebody else, that's cool. If they fail, I find another job. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean? If I, if I start my own business and that fails, I got a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That makes me uncomfortable. So, you know what I mean? I'm trying to learn as much as I can to see if that's even a viable thing in the future. Yeah. And um, there's, there's like for me, just, just in looking back over the past, like I said, the past year, um, you know, past year, 13 13, 14 months, um, there was a point where I remember I was, I was, I was at my desk and I'm working inside this, I'm working inside this, this, this beautiful building, huge glass windows, natural scenery on the other side, especially when the sun is shining in and everything. I just remember, I, I just remember having this feeling like this, this moment of like, like this is, this is great, but if I'm being honest with myself, and I'm just, I'm kind of, I'm kind of talking in my head right now. Right. It's like if I'm, if I'm, if I'm being honest with myself, can I see myself like retiring from this place? And I couldn't, I couldn't see my, I couldn't see my future in that, in that place. And. And it's, it's so, it's so interesting because, and it's nothing against, it's nothing against the organization that I was, that I was working for. It's nothing, nothing right. against them, but it's just like me just taking in a self-evaluation of where I am and kind of where my mind envisions me being, you know, beyond this. Right. And it was just, it was, it was such a strange I guess I shouldn't say strange. It was just how things unfolded in the months after that. And, you know, sometimes a situation beyond what you know has to push you out. Yeah. It has to push you out and make you uncomfortable. Because like I said, had I not, you know, had I not, um, had I not been put in a position to where I either choose to stay under these circumstances or I volunteer to, or I volunteer to resign, which was a whole new experience for me. Like I'd never faced that before, but it was, it was a gift in a sense of, it put me in a place to force myself to learn something different. And so I'm thankful for that discomfort because that discomfort, you know, ultimately led me to, you know, be invited to come on and talk on a podcast. Um, it's, it's, it's allowed me to be curious about learning different things about cybersecurity. It's allowed me to network and build connections with different people. Um, and it's, it's, it's not something that I can, you know, I, I'm thankful for it. I'm right. thankful for it. Sometimes, sometimes we need that. We need that discomfort. We need that unfortunate. We need that unfortunate turn in circumstances to get us to where we need to be. And then at the end of the day, wherever we are, it's still up to us to do our part to, to, to make certain things happen to an extent. You know, there's, there's, there's things that we can do that we can control. And then there's things that we have to be aware of that, we can't control yeah but what do we focus on we focus on the things that we can do you know and let everything else take care of itself yeah definitely so yeah i i, I wholeheartedly agree with you and and luckily it brought you you know here like now you've got a, a new new passion you got something to, to look forward to every day because you're going to be learning something new every day and that, that's that's also awesome about it like i literally learned something new every day uh, whether it be through actual work or through, uh, through study or just even just reading, you know, like, like, oh, okay, I didn't even know you could do that. Like, um, especially with all the attacks that have recently been happening, like, oh, I didn't even know I, you could do that. <laughs> it's something I look out for now. Yeah. It was, it was like a, 
I think I think at the time that I was in my boot camp, it was like a historical time to be in a boot camp because like while we're you know, while we're studying and, and learning about cybersecurity, like I remember like the solar winds attack like happened. Yeah. It's like, wow, this is like perfect time. And like we're sitting here like, you know, in the in the very early stages of learning about cybersecurity and here we here it is, an actual real life event yeah. occurs. And then, like what back in back in May, we had the uh, uh, Colonial Pipeline. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that was right here. That was that was here in Houston. Like that was that was huge. Like, right. you know, so there's you know, so there's you know, real use cases going on right there, like right there before your eyes as you're as you're trying to learn about, you know, the 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 space of cybersecurity. Yeah. Yeah, and you have the awareness to actually understand what's happening as well. You know what I mean? Like, so it, it flew over a lot of people's uh, heads because it's not their thing. Like, so they they they're just wondering why they can't get gas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Can't get gas for what? Or you know what I mean? like, there's now there's a chip shortage and uh, all that stuff because the pandemic. Like, you don't necessarily correlate the two, right? Like, so why why can't I get a PS Five? <laughs> well, because of all this stuff because of a virus. You're like, really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, it's, 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 it is a crazy time to be, uh, to, to be, like you say, you call it your infancy. I don't, I don't, I don't see it that way. I think you're, you're far beyond what you believe you are. Um, but you are, you know, new, new to the game. So it is a great time for you to be in it, uh, and, and getting those experiences. Cause you have people who've been in it for decades, scratching their head. Like, I didn't even know that was possible, <laughs> but, but here it is, it's, it's happened to us. So now you have to think like, what does the future look like? And that changes training pipelines. So like this person who is far beyond now has to figure out ways to train people who are starting out. <laughs> like, like this is how the game has changed now. This is what you need to be on the lookout for. So again, ever evolving. So um, do you have any particular people that you stay in contact with who, where it's kind of like a iron sharpens iron kind of, kind of relationship like do you have any like like a handful of people or that person like that you have that professional camaraderie with that kind of helps you to guess to uh that kind of helps you in your career yeah uh yeah yeah definitely like so um being in the military like we you always have uh, uh extended family right so you have people you meet uh, it could be like for a short period of time or a long period of time, whatever, but the, the military will find a way to break y'all apart. <laughs> so you have to stay in contact with that person. When you come back together, it's like you never left. Um, uh, for me right now, it's it's definitely Shannon and Levon, my co-host, uh, which we're in all different time zones, right? Like they're back in the States. One is on the West Coast, the other one's in Mountain Time. I think it's Mountain Time. Um, we met in Virginia a decade ago, right? Mm-hmm. So we... Like those were the people I reached out to first when I wanted to do the podcast. I was like, you know what? This is an idea I have. I'm currently in quarantine because <laughs> I travel from overseas. I travel from stateside overseas. I'm lo- losing my mind in this hotel room. Let me call them up and see if they have time to talk to me. And then that's where the podcast was born out of. Um, when it comes to business and, and moves like that, I have uh, Jeffrey Lodick. Um, he's also from Buffalo. But I met him in the military Uh five six years ago like phenomenal dude uh i i find myself using his quotes all the time he's a most a motivational speaker he's army i'm air force so <laughs> so like the the different mindsets come into play all the time like he's somebody i look up to and i i seriously ask questions like you know i'm thinking about making this move i'm thinking about doing this with the podcast i'm thinking about doing that uh he's he's, he's always like 15 steps ahead like he's always doing something great so somebody I'm, I'm, you know, uh, I don't like to say chasing, but I, I, I see him making moves. And I'm like, I want to go in that direction. Um, but yeah, like I mean, people I, I run into on LinkedIn, man, like, like I'm going to stay in contact with you now because I want to know your journey, right? I want to know Tish's journey. Like, I, I want to see what, what moves you guys are making. Uh, or on the other side of the, of the firewall, I have uh, Chelsea Pierre, you know, she's an entrepreneur. I have uh, Aisha Holland, she's an entrepreneur. Um uh, Gabe Davis, he works for SZA and he's doing phenomenal big things, right? So I keep in touch with all these people and uh, I think it helps balance me out. Um, and then you know, 
make moves or do collaborations. Like, you know, like you, you may want to, you know, it, do something in uh, audio video in the future, or you might be, you might be a, a person who writes blogs and stuff like that. Like, Oh, you know, I want to see what, what, uh, what James is doing. You know what I mean? Like how's, he's making moves right now. Uh, and depending on your career path, like, like you might, you might open the door for me. <laughs> like, well, hey, I mean, hey, hey I put mean, me on. <laughs> well, 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 here's, and see, that's, I think that's, I think that's the other thing because for me, like, I've been the recipient of so many, um, of so much good fortune of other people just kind of doing things on my behalf. And it's like, man, and you, and someone that it's like, it's almost like you want to, you want to repay all those who have kind of come before you or have done things, you know, just to kind of help you along the way. Like you kind of want to just do it like on this, you want to do something on this big, big scale to kind of pay it for it. Like, a, like, um, I wrote about a buddy of mine who who paid it forward on my behalf to kind of help me. I shouldn't even say kinda, but he paid it forward on my behalf, which financially it allowed me to retake the exam, the Security Plus. Okay. And and that and that was that was huge for me. Like I don't think I know for me, like I'll never be able to say I've 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 accomplished things and done things by myself. Like I had to have. I had to have that coach to 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 show me how to work out. I had to have that teacher to educate me on on you know the fundamentals of reading, writing, and, and arithmetic. You know, I had to have um, that coworker that showed me how to do this. I had to have that manager who gave me this feedback. Like all those things contribute to the development of of who I am and 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 where I am and where I want to go. So it's to 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 be able to to be able to pay it pay it forward in 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 some regard like that's that's huge um and like i said i've just been the recipient of like so many different people giving um giving me chances giving me feedback um showing me how to do certain things right different things um and that includes you know family friends you know, past coworkers, total strangers, like it's like it's it's huge, it's it's huge, and I'm I'm I've just been fortunate. I've just been fortunate, and I continue to be fortunate. So, yeah, that's, that's good. That's good that you recognize it, right? Because uh, some people are like, "Yeah, I did it. I did this. Pull myself up by my bootstraps." You're like, "Let's see, no one helped you." <laughs> no no one motivated you like someone nah, some, some, someone had to make those boots i mean you know so you know so right. uh so that's good that's good that you recognize it man because that's, that's for everybody right Every, yeah. everybody is, yeah. someone's helping you right so like my big support system is obviously my family uh, my, my wife and kids um but then my extended family right so i got you know hundreds of people i've met throughout the military where i, I run into them again you know on linkedin or assignments and stuff like that and you're like oh yeah i remember you know such such like we were on this team together we did this together we did this project together um you know we're always helping each other like as long as you keep that mentality moving forward uh i, I think you do uh phenomenal um maybe you want to stay away from twitter then <laughs> <laughs> like the, the only the only the only kind of toxic in there yeah <laughs> The only social media I have right now is LinkedIn. And it's like that's where my time is spent. <laughs> and then link, LinkedIn is is by far the most positive out of all of them. So I definitely say uh, continue continue to stay in that one. Um, and then just just talk to people. Like just yeah. just hit them up, and uh, you'd be surprised. Like some people want to sell you stuff. That happens. You'd be like, ah, oh, I don't want to buy nothing. <laughs> yeah, I just I just I just I just go delete. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know that person. Yeah, but the the majority of people just want to just want to have a conversation, find out where, what you what you do, how you do it, and then maybe you can use it to network, right? Push push and pull type situation. So yeah, it's like uh, there's there's a uh, like there's people that I've exchanged number with that I still need to give a call just you know just to just to have a conversation with them. Yeah. Um and I, and like is I think one of the, one of the other things is like when someone reaches out to me because they've seen a post where I reference passing the security plus and then they'll they'll reach out to me to ask me just tips like or mm-hmm. or or advice or just you know my thoughts it's like really yeah. I'm, I'm 
I'm glad you thought you thought enough of me to even ask me. Like I'm, you know, I'm still I'm just starting out. But yeah. but but it's also yeah. And so, you know, like I, I appreciate that. Um, because my my ultimate goal or the main thing I really just care about is I just want to be helpful. Yeah. If I if I can be if I can be helpful, that's that's like that makes it that makes it all the better. Um, so when people when people reach out to me to get my advice, like what like what um what tools did you use? What what resources do you recommend? How did you know? How did you study? How how do you feel about the exam? And you know, just just little just little simple things like that. Just being able to engage someone because someone thought enough of me to even ask me. Like that's that's a, that's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's and it's it, it's meaningful. It means a lot. Right. Yeah, definitely. So just keep that up. I'm telling you, it's gonna take you far. Like you 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 will definitely be surprised or not. You know what I mean? Like because uh, you said like you have awareness that people have helped you. You've helped people. So it's the same it's the same thing. Uh, you just need to like you. Well, not that you need to uh, broaden your network, but you will through by just by being a member of of LinkedIn, you will broaden your network. People will reach out to you, like you said, because you're you're moving. You've you've moved up several rungs of that ladder, right? So there's somebody behind you who is just like, how'd you get up there? <laughs> mm-hmm. well, hey, let me let me let me tell you what let me tell you what I did. This may not work for you, but let me share with you what I did. Yeah, right. So yeah, that's that's phenomenal. Uh, so any any other questions? Um, I can't think of anything right off the top. Um, that's fine. I, I know. I know. I want to give a quick shout out to, to Tish. I want. I want. I want to. I want to shout her out. Yeah. <laughs> on, on on my interview segment, I want to shout her out for 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 referencing me to you, and then I want to just say thank you for for having me on. Like, I'm so excited to talk i was so nervous to talk to you um not not necessarily to you but just to be on the podcast yeah. but at the same time i'm thankful because i'm thankful that you have this platform where you can help people and allow people to kind of talk about themselves talk about their journey and yeah. just be a part of what you're doing and then hopefully you know um you know it's able to help somebody else and, and like which is the goal at the end of the day right so definitely yeah um so Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, definitely. No, thank you for, for, uh, for coming, man. And same, same thing. So shout out, shout out to Tish. Like it was, it was because of her, uh, non-question. Like, uh, uh, (laughs) she, she was like, uh, I forget how we, uh, connect. I think she reached out to me and I was like, yeah, ask me a question. She was like, no, I want a conversation. So, and that's where this came from, right? Yeah. It it felt like something was missing from, from the show. Like I just, people would send me questions and I'm just talking to the void. You don't get that, (laughs) that, that connection i don't see a light bulb cut on you know what i mean yeah but i do like this a lot better um and now I, it's, it's from both ends so the other side of the firewall and for those of, of you who listen to that show uh we get people who are already in those c-suite uh senior level positions like that's me like what did you do to get up there and then we could bring that down to uh to people who look like us so they can know like hey we only make up nine percent but here are the people who are in those positions and here's what they did uh and now from the other side right so from uh from ask this P now I get to ask people who are trying to break in. So I'm like, man, that's, I'm balanced now. <laughs> yeah. You came full circle. Yeah. And, and like, in like in this, I think in this day and time, and especially for those of us who are, who are new, if there's anything that we can, if there's anything that we can be attached to that is truly tangible for us, yeah. whether it be a conversation on a podcast or whether it be that actual you know, solid response from an employer or recruiter, yeah. um, you know, anything that we can get that's, that's tangible that, you know, because we're just, we're just looking to get some help. We're, 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 we're looking, we're looking to grab for anything that will help us to gain traction. And I absolutely believe that that's what your platform provides yeah. um, from the Ask a CISSP it provides something that's tangible. It provides traction for those of us who are trying to get in. So um, again, you know, thank you for, for, for such a platform. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and, and land this plane. Uh, 
thank you again for uh, for coming. So everybody uh, definitely hit up James Carroll the uh, third. He'll, he'll share his details with you. I definitely have a description in the uh, in the in or have his links in the description uh, of the uh, the video. Uh, look for for uh, more breakouts from this episode. So I'll I'll break some of the Q and A down. Uh, and push those out later on in the uh, the weeks to come. The holidays are coming, and I, I don't plan on working, so <laughs> so I'm gonna chop all those up now so I can push them out uh, during the holiday period. Um, but yeah, if you uh, you have a question for me and you uh, don't want to be on the show, just go ahead and send me your question. I can I can answer on the show or in a different video because um, I'm, I'm always down to help. Uh, if you do want to be on the show, hit me up. Uh, obviously, I gotta I gotta talk to you first to make sure you're not crazy, <laughs> and, then, and then we can record. Uh, so far, I'm, I'm bad in a hundred, <laughs> no crazy people. Um, but no, that, that's what the platform is definitely for. Uh, hopefully this helps you in, in the future. Uh, LinkedIn is a living resume and now you have even more content to put on it, right? So that's what we're going for. Um, everybody continue to like, share, subscribe, continue to tune in. Definitely listen to the other side of the firewall. Uh, this week is uh, another banger. We have uh, Aisha Hollins on uh, for Wednesday discussion. And uh, me and Levon are running solo for the first time, I think maybe ever because uh shannon wasn't feeling well so look out for uh for this week's episodes and uh stay safe stay secure all right thanks ryan